As an outcrop of the Air Force Space Command, the US Space Force has been wearing Air Force uniforms and rank insignia since it became its own service in 2019. But this Monday, the Space Force announced new prototype uniforms and enlisted rank insignias that, while obviously derivative of the old Air Force ranks, integrate a sleeker design language reminiscent of Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. In this video, we're going to cover the new rank insignia including their graphical elements, the historical precedents that led up to this moment, and a comparison with the insignias they're replacing. But first, I'd just like to thank the Brigade who help us make content regardless of what YouTube's algorithm thinks about it. If you want to support us and get access to a bunch of perks, join up over at patreon.com slash battleorder. When the Air Force was founded in 1947, they continued using the rank insignia of their original parent, the Army, much like the modern Space Force did with the Air Force. However, in 1949, a new set of rank insignia were authorized, reflective of the Air Force's new posture as a service branch on par with the Army and Navy. There isn't a whole lot out there on the specific rationale behind the new designs, but we can likely chalk up most of it to trying to look unique. At the core of all of the new insignias was a pierced star in the center, hearkening back to the roundel used by the Air Force from 1917 to early 1918 and 1919 to 1942. Unlike the Army, the new chevrons faced downwards and were rounded to match the contours of the new circular emblem. When in 1958 the ranks of Senior and Chief Master Sergeant were added at the newly instituted E8 and E9 pay grades, upwards facing chevrons were added to distinguish them. There were some minor changes over the years such as the addition of the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, the period when junior enlisted airmen got blue stars and NCOs got white stars, the reshuffling of upwards facing chevrons in 1993, and periodic changes in rank titles, but the overall aesthetic of Air Force ranks stayed pretty much similar to the original. When the Space Force broke off from the Air Force, they essentially encountered the same issue as the Air Force did in 1947. They're their own service branch in charge of an entire warfighting domain, but they've essentially been stuck using Air Force gear with Space Force name tapes. The tides of change came earlier this week when the new Space Force rank insignia were announced, in addition to uniforms that could be described as scuffed Battlestar Galactica. Funnily enough, the insignia they're going with isn't one of the four options that had been floated earlier this year. Rather, it looks like they're going with an improved version created by Reddit user Ariosef. It seems like the Space Force's whole design strategy is uncharacteristically community-driven for a military organization. This fits fairly well with the Space Force's identity, which, at least philosophically, is one of the more forward-looking and unorthodox among the service branches. So, with that little background out of the way, let's go rank by rank explaining the changes and how they compare to the Air Force equivalents. The whole system is split into three tiers, the Specialists, the NCOs, and the Senior NCOs. The move from Airmen to Specialists falls in line with the Space Force's Human Capital Strategy, which focuses on knowledge and skills applied in semi-flexible work environments closer to the civilian world than the other services. As for the ranks, first at E1 is Specialist 1 equivalent to the Air Force's Airmen Basic, which most graduate basic training as. While the Air Force equivalent has no rank insignia, the Space Force E-1 does. The Space Force has moved to a hexagonal border on all enlisted ranks and replaced the Air Force's pierced star with a Delta. The Delta, which was also a key element of the Air Force Space Command emblem, was adopted as part of the Space Force's logo in 2020. Meanwhile, junior enlisted above E1 are now distinguished by horizontal bars instead of downwards facing chevrons. Specialist 2s now have a single horizontal bar, Specialist 3s get 2 bars, and Specialist 4s get 3 bars. 
This design was actually at one point going to be used by the Air Force. General Hoyt Vandenberg approved the horizontal bar to distinguish junior enlisted from NCOs in 1952, but didn't intend to actually implement it until pre-existing stocks of rank insignia ran out in 1955. When the Air Force got a new Chief of Staff in 1956, this planned change was reversed and the Air Force retained its chevrons. When moving into the NCO ranks, downwards facing chevrons are reintroduced, but are much pointier than the Air Force's. Above them sits a Delta Globe and Orbit emblem, somewhat reminiscent of the Marine Corps' Eagle Globe and Anchor. Rank titles have been changed as well. The Space Force has replaced the Air Force's Staff Sergeant rank with the Sergeant at E5, represented by three chevrons. Meanwhile, the Technical Sergeant at E6 has four chevrons. To distinguish senior NCOs from junior NCOs, they've added upwards facing rockers, which they call orbital chevrons. The delta is separated from the globe and orbit and inset into these chevrons. The delta breaking through the orbit is likely meant to symbolize reaching for the stars. As for the specific application, Master Sergeant at E7 gets one rocker, Senior Master Sergeant at E8 gets two, and Chief Master Sergeant at E9 gets three. In the Space Force's press release, they say the first rocker represents low Earth orbit, the second represents medium Earth orbit, and the third represents geosynchronous orbit, or an orbit that's high enough to match Earth's rotation. However, these new chevrons match the same number of upwards facing chevrons their Air Force equivalents get, so this was likely symbolism tacked onto the design after the fact. It's currently unclear if the Space Force will replicate the Air Force's temporary senior enlisted billets present at E7, E8, and E9. At these grades, an NCO who acts as the senior enlisted advisor in a unit is referred to as a first sergeant regardless of their pay grade and get a lozenge or diamond added to the insignia. This tradition was not mentioned in the Space Force's announcement. But moving on, the ultimate enlisted rank in the Space Force is the Chief Master Sergeant of the Space Force, the highest ranking NCO in the service, except when a Guardian is acting as the Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman, who is the highest ranking NCO in the whole Armed Forces. The new insignia is somewhat similar to the Air Force's, which includes a wreath around the Pierce Star and two additional stars. The Space Force's features three upwards facing chevrons, a delta, and four downwards facing chevrons like the other E9s. However, a delta globe and orbit wrapped by a hexagonal wreath is inset and flanked by two stars. Overall, the Space Force's enlisted rank insignia are very obviously based on conventions set by the Air Force decades ago, but have a more futuristic feeling design language indicative of its focus on operations in the final frontier. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video where we take a deep dive into the origins of the Lance Corporal, one of the US Marine Corps' most iconic ranks. We'll see you over there.